you guys are interested in coming down, meet us at the gallery. Thank you. Cheers. Hi, good evening everyone. Thank you so much for being here and sharing this moment with us. My name is Maya Ortiz. I'm an associate curator here at the museum and also a co-creator of this exhibition, Spot Hips, uh, Dots and Tiles and Exhibition on Dominoes. This is Arden Sherman. Hi, who is? Um, my name is Arden Sherman. I'm the curator and the director of Hunter East Harlem Gallery. And that's at Hunter College in East Harlem. And that's where this exhibition originated. So you're seeing the second version of spot, like part two of Spots, Dots, Pips, and Tiles. So Maria, Elena, we'll tell you a little bit about us because we think that you know that's interesting. So we're like, okay, so we're friends and we're co collaborators and colleagues and we wanted to work together on an exhibition project. And we were going back and forth through all the ideas and we made a list of artists and it's about play and participation. And then we finally decided we landed on the game of dominoes. And it was really mostly inspired by this work by Lawrence Wiener here that I would encourage you all to take a look at where he uses language in a multiple. Alongside with personal experiences. Yes. Because that some of you may know, I grew up in Puerto Rico, an island where, you know, all my siblings, all my cousins, all I play dominoes a lot with my family. Um, I know, and, and, and this subject is very dear to, to uh, my heart. So suddenly when we started doing research and noticing how many artists were actually using the tile in this popular game to create works, and works that really speak about different uh, great topics of contemporary art, such as identity, such as the relationship between performance and documentation, abstraction, politics, and so on, then it became a you know, really fertile ground to create this exhibition. And since I was working, I do work in East Harlem, uh, uh, the neighborhood is colloquially known as Spanish Harlem, like historically known. So there's dominoes are all over the place. And so it was really inspired by sight. Sight is a huge part of this exhibition. So sight when it was in East Harlem and sight here when it's in Miami. So you're seeing part two, which is very Miami influenced. Um, and this is just a mere, yeah. as Maria was saying, this is just a mere sampling of the artists who take up the game of dominoes as a tool in their practice. This show could fill up the museum uh, if we really wanted to do it, if Tobias would let us do it. Uh, we would fill up the museum because they're so, it's so prominent and so exciting for that, for that fact. So I know that there's some actually really good domino connoisseurs in the audience. So I'm gonna tell a story and if I'm lying, please don't hesitate to correct me. But the domino game actually started in China. It's one of the earliest it has been recorded. And then it reappeared again in uh, 18th century Italy, where uh, monks actually brought it into uh, Europe. It's actually called Domino I learned tonight because uh, the monks would dress in black and white, just like the black and white tile that is so commonly used to play. Then it reappeared again in a lot of places that are actually tropics like the American South, the northern part of Latin America, the Caribbean, also in parts of Africa and West Africa, places that have actually been affected by slavery. There's not a research that kind of points to the correlation of why that happened. However, some of these works might give us some insight into why this, this work is played in different communities. So um, some of the themes that you're going to see here, like something really good about the show is that it's quite multifaceted. The work speaks to different things. But there's actually four things that we have seen that you can experience through this show. One of it is ideas of identity, others um, community, um, as well as strategy and play, as well as um, aesthetics. aesthetics. The aesthetics of the game, the tile itself, the black and the white. So what we mean by aesthetics is, for example, this work in the back is a work by Adriana Lara. She is um, an artist that is uh, from Mexico originally. And she, here, she takes uh, the black and white aesthetic of the tile to create this geometric work, very much an abstract formation. And if you look at it closely, you realize that it almost looks like tiles that are actually falling um, right next to each other. The title of the work is named Coup, which a coup, some of you may know, is an illegal feature of a government. And she's very much speaking about ideas of the domino effect, for example, that were very popular during the Cold War War, a theory in which um, it said that if a country would turn communist, then all the other countries around it would fall like tiles to communism. So very much speaking about ideas of politics, 
but through abstract terms, which that is where I think a lot about um, art and how this work speaks to a larger conversation of contemporary art, because here, which is very much pushing the boundaries between the relation between politics and abstraction, because often we don't think about um, abstraction as uh, a political strategy. And you'll continue, as you explore the show, you'll continue to see this coming up, this idea of strategy and domination and the military and the domino effect. Um, it's present in Donna Conlon and Jonathan Parker's video, which you hear um, behind you, which is a, a video that is about Panama City and these are the historic colonial bricks uh, placed in all throughout the, the reconstructed parts of Panama City. Um, and this very beautiful, poetic, meditative video. Um, that's really speaking of kind of a heavy theme of domination and the domino effect. But I think Shepard yeah, 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 yeah. There's other works that, um, like I was mentioning earlier, feel more prominent with notions of identity. Um, this work by an African-American artist named Ben Sarr. She's known for her Aston Flash works. These are all found objects that um, were collected together to create this uh, two-dimensional piece in which she's really much critiquing stereotypical depiction of people of color and African Americans in the United States. So you have a very controversial figure of the black tar baby, which as you know, a lot of people in entertainment used to dress or paint themselves white entertainers with themselves black to, to play uh, black characters. And then you also see the watermelon, which is a crop that has a lot of significance especially in the American South, as it was used by free slaves to sell work and to actually earn money. Um, and for some reason, uh, perhaps racist reason, it was used also to depict them as lazy. And also you see, um, oh, go ahead. So one of the things that we, we, we learned in our research was um, that dominoes played a role, a, a very culturally significant role in this piece. This is why she has used them in this found object work that she's made here. Um, so in the free in the freed American South, uh, the slaves were meant to go be a part of uh, culture and economy, and they had to sell things, but they weren't given opportunities, uh, education opportunities. So dominoes played a major role in, in in teaching them math and arithmetic, and so then therefore, like, we learn a lot about how important the yes. strategy of learning math and the game. Because as you know, if you're a domino player, you know that, um, and a good one, you know that math is central to winning the game. So actually, the dominoes were used, they would use them within those communities to teach each other math, which is something that, again, you see how the game becomes, in all of our communities, very important because it creates um, a certain type of um, liberation of sorts and engagement. So here and then, of course, it's all in a tray. So all those different jobs that are very critically speaking about um, uh, a particular reality in the United States and wider um, in, in the wider world, perhaps. Um, yeah, we also have two artists here, and perhaps Glenda Lee uh, could speak on her work, which is um, here in the middle of the world. Where is she? So Glenda Lee Medina is here from New York City, and she's created this work. This is a commission work that she made. to win, and to use by domino is to use all the other doubles. Do I have everybody? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna move on. So my piece is all the doubles. I mean, my reinterpretation of all the doubles. So this is the blank, the double one, the double two, the double three, and so forth. So the reason why I did the doubles, which do not win by Capicu, it's a misnomer on purpose, um, was to highlight a couple of things. So this piece is made of domino sugar, specifically domino sugar. So I'm using domino sugar to kind of highlight the relationship domino, like the sugar industry has had with Puerto Rico and how that's attributed to the identity that we have. 
like and that's why I'm using the doubles too because I feel like we're always in between these two spaces having this double identity of being a citizen and yet being property of America in a kind of a way um, so the misnomer is, is on purpose and I was always really fascinated as a kid with Kapiku because it's like you have to learn how to count numbers it's not an easy way to win it's actually very strategic, it's very hard to do, and my father was very great at it, he's a great counter. So my aim in, when I was a kid was to beat him by Gapiku, which I also really did. And so I knew that I wanted to make a, a, a piece about it, a piece about how we can use words, because Gapiku actually means, when, in, in Catalan, heads and tails. So to have, a, a, or in, the, in mathematics, to have a number that can be read both backwards and forwards. So the double should be used as Capico because this is the only tile that you can read backwards and forwards and not be confused. But yet it's not, you know? We, they call it domina, which means to be dominated, which is the doubles, the two doubles. And then they call chuchasa, which means to be whipped, the blank. And you know, the blank wasn't included into the domino set until the Italians got it. So there's all these like underlying kind of subconscious way of like, using play to kind of dominate in a way. And so that's what this piece means to me. And I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Uh, what I learned with this one is the idea of you don't know what numbers gonna came when you start to play dominoes. And if you want to win the game, you have to put uh, the number you have. In this case, you don't have uh, numbers, you have uh, dictators. So if you want to win and don't be eliminated, you have to play that game. So it's uh, like a metaphor of what's going on in the real life when ideology frames your life. That's why this, this piece is named I Don't Play Dominoes. So actually, I don't play too much dominoes, but I like a lot the cultural aspect of the relation between popular space and power. And this is about that in general. But now, um, Rodolfo, I remember that you mentioned that you actually, this work is displayed here this way. However, it was actually a performance of sorts in which you actually gave this um, domino to people in Havana to play. Yes. And what was their reaction? Well, they, they say that Fidel Castro is the double mind. That is, that is the first time that you want to really drink off in the game. So if you have a double Fidel Castro in Cuba, you will put as a first thing that you want to take out of your game. So, which is really interesting because it's like a sociological uh, experiment in the public space. And the people make their own history and put numbers on each one of these guys. And in Cuba, politics is very uh, day basis topic. Uh, and I know Cuba is a, well, it's a complex uh, reality. But people have time to read, and people know a lot of uh, international politics and, and about history, which is a good thing. So people enjoy a lot to put it, uh, different uh, numbers to the different guys inside to the game. So it was an interesting experiment. So the video is on Vimeo, so you can see it. You're very welcome to check it. Now, performing is kind of almost like dancing on the streets of Cape Town. Uh, very much inspired by uh, early animation experiments, like uh, as some of you may know, uh, animation, you know, with cartoon, they started with different images that are in movement. So that is what he's kind of alluding to here. He uses his body to mimic the shapes of the dominoes. He's very much a, an artist who deals with a body performance, experimentation, and in this case, documentation. And he's and he's decided to to install the piece in this shape. Of you know, kind of the, the aftermath of the game. 28 tiles, which is the 28 tiles that you get um, uh, on a six-game uh, domino game, which is what you see here. Um, and it's really neat, yeah, because again, uh, this idea of border dancing uh, very much comes into play in his work. So the, the last piece we'll talk about, and then we'll let you all explore, and then we can have we actually have or ask and we can have some Q and A. You can do it. <laughs> Light. Um, this work is pretty fun. This is a work by uh, Kenny Rivera. Kenny Rivera is an artist from New York. He's from Washington Heights. He's of Dominican descent. 
and he went to graduate school at Yale, he got his MFA, and at the end of the semester, he swept up the, his studio, and this is what you're looking at. Yeah, so this is his suite. So we're, this is really, we, we think about this work in, in terms of the, of the theme, that we overarching theme of community. So we think about the game that happened, the, the, loud, the long nights, the loud conversations, the remnants of his art making practice, the drugs he did, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the fun and that temporal, that temporal aspect, that community building, that really only happens when you're around the table. Okay, so, questions? Yeah, questions. We're, we're losing everyone. Questions. If you guys have questions, we're here, explore, you can find us later as well. Okay. How long did it, this process of the exhibition take? Did it together? Well, oh. I think, that's I, think, I, think we, I think we actually started planning this show in January of 2016. It, we took it to Hunter by fall of 2016. It was last fall at Hunter. And so, and it's, it's been nonstop. We've been thinking but about Domino's for like, over like a yeah, year and a half. But also, I would like to add that it's like, it's an ongoing collaboration and discussion. Okay. Because like, um, as I mentioned, as we mentioned earlier, uh, we reshaped the show for you from Miami. And we have had people interested in taking the show. And I think that if it continues, yeah. like, we will do their version. Exactly. You know, site specificity is super Peace. important to us. Yeah. So to Cuba. Excuse me? How was it reshaped from Harlem well, to here? I can give you a great example. Um, in the show in New York, there was a documentary section that included different images of people playing dominoes um, all over the world. All over the world. We felt that everybody knows that image. Everybody, knows, everybody probably has that image on their on their photos. So, and also we are at Pan, a big museum, the big the big art museum of the city. What uh, you know, we feel we have to do is actually connect people more with art. So let's actually let the art speak first. So that, that then we can actually use it as a really great excuse to get more people in here. Yeah, that's exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, just a comment. No, but I can definitely see a difference in the work in Harlem. The work in Harlem felt a little bit more like uh, it was more of a social piece, I think, which was beautiful in that in that space. And really, and then here it's, it definitely is a little bit more of a visual piece. It's definitely visual there too, but I think. It's just, it's nice to see a lot of the same work in a different venue and look so different and beautiful. And beautiful. So I think that's Thank you. And maybe it will go on and you can see it elsewhere. Right, that would be on and on. Yeah. Maybe we'll continue to develop. City. Huge Cuban population in Tampa. Ybor City. Right in Tampa? <laughs> huge Cuban population. It's true. Take yeah. us. We need, need a big museum there. Any other questions? Any, uh, any more questions or comments? If not, we're here. Please don't hesitate to go for